Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. I'm Manhar and welcome back to MSFT webcast. In this video, we are going to learn the steps on how to configure Hyper-V replication. Hyper-V replica is a disaster recovery feature in Microsoft Hyper-V that allows you to replicate virtual machines from one Hyper-V host to another. This asynchronous replication ensures that in the event of a failure or disaster, you can quickly recover your VMs and minimize downtime. Hyper-V Replica offers a robust and flexible DR solution for organizations of all size. A Replica Virtual Machine is a complete, ready-to-run duplicate of the source virtual machine. It can be switched on and be up and running in a few moments. When this happens, Hyper-V Replica assumes that the source virtual machine is lost and unrecoverable. When the replica is activated, it in a sense becomes the official copy of the virtual machine. To set up a basic Hyper-V replica, you need a minimum of two hosts running Hyper-V. After configuring replication for a specific virtual machine, a copy of the VM is generated on the target host. The source host then transfers any changes made to the original VM at regular intervals, which can be set to 30 seconds, 5 minutes or 15 minutes. In the lab environment, we have two Windows Server 2025 machines set up as Hyper-V servers with local storage. Both Hyper-V servers are joined to the Active Directory domain msftwebcast.com. The domain environment is not necessary. You can also use Hyper-V servers which are part of the workgroup. We want to set up HVHost01 as our primary server for Hyper-V VM replication. We have set up a VM called TestVM01 on this Hyper-V host. Before we can target a specific Hyper-V server for application, we must first enable it as a replica server. Right click the Hyper-V host and select Hyper-V settings. Navigate to the replication configuration section. Check the box that says enable this computer as a replica server. This will enable all the other replica configuration options. We can replicate over HTTP or encrypted HTTPS. It is recommended to use HTTPS in production environments. HTTPS requires the configuration of certificates to encrypt communications between the two Hyper-V servers, ensuring that data remains secure during transmission. Since this is a test lab, we will use HTTP to keep the setup simple. Check the box that says use Kerberos HTTP. We can also configure which servers are authorized to replicate virtual machines to the target Hyper-V server. Select Allow Replication from any authenticated server to allow the replica server to accept VM replication traffic from any primary server that authenticates successfully. Select Allow Replication from the specified servers to accept traffic only from the primary servers you specifically select. For both options, you can specify where the replicated VHDs should be stored on the replica Hyper-V server. Since we are using HTTP, we are going to use the second option. Click on Add to specify the partner server's FQDN. Type hv-host02.msftwebcast.com Click on Browse to select the location where the replica files will be stored. We have changed the default location on both Hyper-V servers to the E drive. We will keep it at the default location e colon slash vhds. Specify the trust group name. We will choose the suggested name msftwebcast.com. This group defines a set of servers within which a specific primary virtual machine can be moved. Click OK to save the changes. After configuring replication configuration settings, click Apply to save the changes. The pop-up window suggests configuring the firewall to allow inbound traffic on the server. Click OK twice to close the Hyper-V settings page. Open Run menu, type wf.msc and press Enter to open Defender Firewall with advanced security. Click on Inbound Rules. When we install the Hyper-V role on the host, default exceptions for HTTP and HTTPS were automatically created. If you change the default port settings, you will need to also change the firewall exception. If you are using these standard ports, you will need to look at the rule and enable it. Right click on Hyper-V Replica HTTP Listener and select Enable Rule. After enabling the rule, close the firewall window. We need to perform the same steps on second Hyper-V host. 
Let's add a second Hyper-V server to this Hyper-V manager so we can easily manage both servers from a single console. Right click on Hyper-V manager and select connect to server. Type HV host 02 and click on OK. The other Hyper-V host is successfully added to the Hyper-V manager. Right click the HV host 2 and select Hyper-V settings. Navigate to the replication configuration. Check the box that says enable this computer as a replica server. Check the box that says use Kerberos. Scroll down and click on add to specify the partner servers FQDN. Type hvhost01.msftwebcast.com. We are going to use the default location e colon slash vhds. Choose the suggested name msftwebcast.com. Click OK to save the changes. Click apply to save the changes. Click OK. Again click OK to close the properties window. Go to hvhost02 RDP window. I have connected with our second Hyper-V server using RDP. Let's search for wf.msc. Open Windows Defender Firewall with advanced security. Click on Inbound Rules. Look at the Hyper-V replica HTTP listener rule and enable it. We have successfully enabled Hyper-V replication and configured the firewall settings on both Hyper-V servers. The next step is to configure Hyper-V VM replication. Click on HV Host 01. To begin the configuration process for Hyper-V replication, right click on a test VM 01 and select Enable Replication. This will launch the Enable Replication wizard for the Hyper-V Virtual Machine. Click Next. Next, we need to choose the target for the Hyper-V replica. We can type in the name of our Hyper-V server or use the Browse button to find the server in Active Directory. In our lab, we want to replicate the virtual machine from hvhost01 to hvhost02. Type hvhost02 and click on Check Names. Click OK to select the replica server hvhost02 and click Next. Specify the connection parameters and authentication method to match the settings on the replica server. By default, data is compressed, but you can modify this setting if necessary. We are going with the default settings. Click Next to continue. Choose the replication VHDs you want to replicate to the target server. If there is more than one VHD, make sure to select the VHD containing the VM's operating system. In our example, we only have one VHD. After making the necessary selections, click Next. On this page, Choose the replication interval from the drop-down list. This value determines how frequently Hyper-V sends changes to the replica server. The default interval is 5 minutes. Other available options are 30 seconds and 15 minutes. We'll go with the default settings, but you can adjust it according to your requirements. On this page, we need to configure settings related to additional recovery points. We can also choose to keep extra recovery points or maintain the latest recovery point. The additional recovery points will be kept as Hyper-V checkpoints on the Hyper-V replicas. If you want to consistently recover applications and workloads that have their own VSS writers, we recommend selecting the Volume Shadow Copy Service Frequency and specifying how often to create app-consistent snapshots. Note that the Hyper-V VMM Requester service must be running on both the primary and secondary Hyper-V servers. In this example, I am going to select the first option, maintain only the latest recovery point. After that, click Next. On this page, choose the initial replication method for your Hyper-V replicas. The default setting which sends the initial copy over the network will transfer the primary VM configuration file and the virtual hard disk files you selected over your network connection. If you work with a branch office, it could be useful to send the initial copy using external media depending on the bandwidth. If the primary VM is already configured on the secondary site as a replica VM, it can be useful to select Use an existing virtual machine on the replication server as the initial copy. For this, we can use Hyper-V export to export the primary VM and then import it as a replica VM on the secondary server. Here, we will use the network to send the copy. For larger VMs or limited bandwidth, you can schedule the initial replication to occur at a later time and configure it for off-week hours. In this example, we want to start the replication immediately. Click Next to continue. Verify that your configuration is accurate. 
If needed, you can click the previous button to make adjustments or click finish if everything looks good. The VM data is transferred in accordance with your chosen settings. In our case, the data transfer has begun. On primary replica server, we can see VM status sending initial replica. On secondary replica server, we can see the VM status receiving changes. Wait for the initial replica process to complete. The initial replication has been completed. To check the VM replication health, select the VM on the primary host Hyper-V Manager window. Right click test VM01, click on replication and then select view replication health. When Hyper-V replication has finished, we should see a message similar to this one. Replication is enabled for this VM and this is our primary replica server. For HV host 02, we can see it says current replica server. Let's check the same thing on HV host 02. Right click on VM, click on replication and then select view replication health. We can confirm that replication is enabled and this is our replica server. We have successfully set up Hyper-V replication for our VM test VM01. If the original VM becomes unavailable due to a host failure or another issue, Hyper-V replica allows administrators to manually fail over to the replica. In clustered environments, the replica broker helps manage the failover process. The administrator can activate the replicated VM on the target host and clients must be redirected to this instance typically through DNS updates or manual reconfiguration. Note that the replicated VM may have different IP addresses, VLAN settings or other configurations. You have to modify those settings as per your Hyper-V server settings. That's all for this video on how to configure Hyper-V VM replication. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on Microsoft Hyper-V and other Microsoft related topics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.